In this video, we're going to be going through covering obtaining synchronization from the engine to ensure we have a stable RPM coming in, ready to then set the base timing. Let's jump over to Mighty. So first of all, this car has already been timed at 271. I'm going to set this to a random number just so we know it's absolutely wrong. The next thing we want to do is we plan to crank the engine and we know that the ignition timing is likely to be out because this is a brand new blank ECU. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our fueling mode and our spark motor off such that we have no fuel being injected and no sparks taking place. This lets us safely confirm synchronization before we then move on to timing the engine itself with ignition timing. So let's go to fueling mode, set it to off. Let's go to wasted spark, the ignition mode, turn it to off. And you'll note down here that the power cycle was lit, telling us that we need to cycle the ignition to activate those mode changes because they are major setting changes on the ECU. So let's do that, key off. Wait for Mighty to drop. There it is, and then we turn the key back on. We hear the fuel pump prime, Mighty reconnects. Our power cycle indicator has disappeared, and we now know our modes are off. Now we know this engine, as per the previous video, has a 36 minus 1, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the wrong mode, just as a demonstration of what we expect to see when things are right. Again, power cycle, which I'll do very quickly. There we go. And now I'm going to crank the engine. And the critical things to watch here are crank IRQs, which occur every time a tooth flies past a sensor, we'll get a pulse. The sync status, at the moment not synchronized because it isn't detecting the engine spinning, and the resultant RPM. So I'm going to go ahead and crank the engine now. Let's watch how crank IRQs increase, and let's see what happens with these two, noting that we are in the wrong mode for the engine. The ECU is expecting to see 60 minus 2 trigger pattern, same as on a Vauxhall, and we know we're a 36 minus 1. So let's spin the engine over and see what happens. Okay, so we see the crank IRQs increase. We had about 460 teeth fly past our sensor when we did that short cranking uh, time. But we never gained synchronization and we never got an RPM appear either. I'm going to change this to the correct pattern, which is 36 minus 1. The box has gone green to illustrate the 36 minus 1 has been set. I'm then going to cycle the power again, so key off. And key on. Now when I crank the engine, we'll again get the same crank IRQs counting up, but we should see our sync status come active and then an RPM start to be tracked. If we see sync status drop in and out or the RPM drop back to zero and things like that, we know we don't have a stable signal and at that point we need to investigate. There will be a deep dive video linked below which goes through various trigger diagnosis steps using things like the inbuilt logger. But for now, we know this engine is going to work on these settings because we know the wiring and everything is okay. So let's crank it over and we should see a stable RPM when cranking. And there it was, full synchronization with a steady RPM of about 215. So we now know the ECU is accurately tracking the engine. Nothing's happening as a result of that. We're not putting any fuel in and we're not putting any sparks in. The next step is to actually set up our ignition timing using a timing light to confirm that when we command a spark at 10 degrees, it's actually happening at 10 degrees on the engine. So let's jump into that next. 